Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hi. My name is Kate Finley. I am the Chief Academic Officer at DC International, and I feel really grateful to be able to be here with you just for a bit today and also to be able to introduce our keynote speaker shortly. Um, there's two, two reasons uh, that I am really excited about today and how the morning went and about uh, kicking off this afternoon. First, I think it's um, sometimes a luxury to just really be able to spend the day talking about teaching and learning um, with colleagues, with teachers, uh, and really to dive into that in a meaningful way um, with a little separation from the regular day-to-day -day, day -day stuff. So I feel lucky and fortunate to be able to do that with this group here. Um, the second reason is a bit of a personal reason. Um, when I was in the fourth grade, uh, my teacher at the time, um, Mr. Shenton, who I feel uh, fairly safe talking about, I think given how long ago it was that I was in fourth grade, there's a good chance he's no longer with us. Um, but um, he uh, told me and uh, my parents that I would never be good at math. Um, that it was just not going to be my thing. Uh, and that really stuck with me for a while. Um, and luckily, later, I was able to, um, to prove him wrong. Um, and also, uh, it was something that really fueled the t my teaching um, and my leadership later to ensure that all students that I was with at any given time understood that they are mathematicians. Um, and that with their ability to be mathematicians, they can do whatever it is that they want to do. Uh, and so, actually, thank you, Mr. Shenton, wherever you might be, um, for inspiring that in me uh, and for making me, uh, giving me the desire to be a mathematician one day and also to, um, to support young mathematicians. Uh, Dr. Lou Matthews is a transformative figure in the world of mathematics education renowned for his commitment to making math a liberating and deeply human experience. His efforts have significantly impacted equity and cultural relevance in math teaching, benefiting communities across the US, the Caribbean, and Africa. As the founder of Inspire Math, Dr. Matthews has been instrumental in developing innovative teaching tools and platforms, notably the Hope Wheel and Pie Before Dinner, enriching the learning experience for students, parents, and educators alike. In his role as the Director of Mathematics and Science at City Teaching Alliance, Dr. Matthews plays a crucial role in nurturing the next generation of math teachers for urban schools. His work includes significant partnerships with institutions like American University to enhance STEM education in major US cities, including DC, Dallas, Philly, and Baltimore, or if you say it correctly, Baltimore. <laughs> a respected academic with tenures at Georgia State University and the University of South Carolina, Dr. Matthews is also a national speaker, shedding light on racial equity and belonging in STEM and education. His literary contributions, including the best-selling book series, Engaging in Culturally Relevant Mathematics Tasks, and various studies, chapters, and blogs reflect his deep commitment to culturally relevant education. As a co-founder of the Journal of Urban Mathematics Education, he continues to influence and shape the discourse around urban mathematics teaching and learning. Please welcome Dr. Matthews. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate it. I was just talking, that is a sweet intro. <laughs> I mean, Kate, I'm gonna get you to give me an intro because I can't, give, I can't let my mama do it. Um, I'm speaking at the White House next week and i um, doing a, a, a flash talk. I had to throw that in there. And I told my mom, so my mom's first response is, what are you wearing, right? <laughs> so I'm not gonna let her do the intro. Kate, thank you. Um, it's gonna be you, for sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lou Matthews, and I spend my time talking about hope and love, and healing and inspiration through mathematics to people, organizations, communities, families, 
and the like. But yesterday I was in an Uber, just coming back from Philadelphia, and so the Uber driver is a brother from East, East Africa, and he's um, having this conversation. I, I really was just shooting the breeze, but I you know, bit off um, a bit more than I could chew, and he started talking about Uber versus, uh, he was a cab driver, and Uber versus driving cab. And so he goes into this big spill about um, uh, Uber. That com company is wicked, blah, blah, blah. I hope there's no Uber representatives here. But, um, and he was describing the money, right? He was describing, well, if you get gas, I got insurance. I paid $30,000 for my car. And, and then if you think about the Uber driver, at a, they make $150 a day, and then they get what? 30% of that? So he's talking to me. He doesn't know who I am. And so he's having this whole conversation about the mathematics as to why this is cruel, why this is inhumane. Hey, Rick, how you doing? And um, why this is inhumane. And then he goes about the evils of the Western world. Now, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I love, I love some, some, some evil of the Western world talk, right? <laughs> and so he's going on and on. And I'm just, ah, OK, I bit off a bit more than I get you. I got to my um, apartment and you know, bags out. And so he's, he got my bags out for me, and he's like, um, me, I'm across the street now. He's leaning over, and he's uh, leaning over his car. Hey, and da 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 but if we can just come together, da da da, -da. And he's still going, and I'm like, wow. But that's my conversation. And it makes me think about the conversations you might have. I, in fact, I have these conversations almost every day. I hate telling people what I do. Yeah, I, I hate it. I hate telling people that I'm a mathematics educator, that I'm a math creative and mathematics teacher. I hate it. Because they say one of two things. And you know what they are. <laughs> see, yeah, 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 see. See, this is why I hate it. This is why I hate it. You know what they are. What's the first one? Shout it out, anyone. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gosh, listen. Do you know any other profession or subject that elicits <laughs> such powerful <laughs> messages like hate? Not, you know, I hate math. This is worse than I hate Uber. This is I hate math, right? Unsolicited. I haven't even told you a bad thing about math, just that I do it. And, you know, I hate math. The other thing they do, the other thing they say is what? Well, they point it to me. They point to me and say, you must be smart. You must be good at math. You must be gifted. And it's like, I know, I know what you think. It's like lifting weights, right? I know, I know. Right? It's like, it's like lifting weights. Even if you don't, you don't deny it, right? Hey, you've been in the gym, you lift the weights. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's been since January, and I broke my resolution, right? But it's one of those things. There's great privilege. There's great power in, in saying you can do mathematics while simultaneously recognizing that there are people that experience not math anxiety. I know. Forget what you've heard. This isn't math anxiety. There are people that experience real trauma in the spaces where mathematics is housed. And it's that trauma that people feel, even into their adulthood, continually speak to. And when they speak about it, you know it's trauma because they name place, they name people, they name the event, and then they name and voice the feeling of trauma. And so we, talk, we like to say math anxiety because it puts the onus on the person to, to then ex having to explain away, well, how come you don't feel about mathematics like, like you need to feel about mathematics? But it's trauma is, looks at this idea of something's happening to you and there's a response. There's not just a response in your mind. There's a response even in your reaction to what I said in your body. We don't like to talk about mathematics in the body and how it makes people feel and how it shapes people. So I posed this question, and I want to talk to you today about the mud pies and the possibilities, transforming mathematics through love and hope. So I'm going to pose a question. And I know what you're thinking, right? You must be really, really good at helping people to feel and work through their mathematics from. I would be a great mathematics therapist. 
I would be the world's best mathematics therapist except for this one issue I have. It's an issue you have too, and I'm going to prove it. The next 10, 15, 20, I think I have an hour and a half, 90 minutes <laughs> or so. Math. So, and, and it's this, right? So when I think of mathematics, I think of, I see these images. Or when I am told to think of mathematics, people show me these images. My favorite TV shows always have some sort of blackboard, and, and I, mean, I haven't seen a blackboard in a long time, but the shows seem to have them, and some fuzzy, fuzzy mathematics uh, on the board, whether it's differential. And it, it, it's made to actually really be as confusing as possible. Well, that looks like Pythagoras, but it's not quite Pythagoras, right? So this idea, and then you see these messages of we love math, and math teachers are trained to tell students that they love math. And I would be a great mathematics therapist, except I don't know if you believe it. Let me cook, let me cook, let me cook, let me cook. <laughs> and then we, we have posters, whole campaigns, I love math. And when I was growing up, this was, we had this campaign, math is power. And, and remember, there were, I'm, I don't want to date myself too much, but there was a, a famous set of commercials in the 80s about where's the beef, oh, 80s or 90s, where's the beef? And then so people would say, well, where's the math, right? And then this is my favorite here, people would say, well, the beauty of math. And that further institutionalizes this idea that something's wrong with you because you don't see the beauty in math. You can't see this beauty in math. And there's privilege and there's power, let's admit, to saying that there is beauty in math. <laughs> I'm the worst part. I would be a great math therapist. This, I, should have titled, I should have titled it this, uh, except for this one thing. When I travel first class, <laughs> let's say you and I are going, uh, we're traveling first class. We're traveling, no, sorry, we're traveling on, on, let's say, Delta. I have first class, and you don't. I said I got bumped up. I go into first class. And so I get on first. <laughs> I get on before you. And so I sit in first class, and I'm not the best person. And we're ready, I'm not the best person. Um, so I sit, on, I sit in first class, and you come along. I don't make eye contact with you. I know we were just together, but I don't make eye contact. I don't like to make eye contact if I'm sitting down in first class. Go, 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 go. And in fact, I, I'm from Bermuda, if you recognize the accent. And um, I sit English cross, just like you English cross, and, but I turn, my, I turn my body to the window. <laughs> I don't want to make, I read, I read, I scroll or read, you know, and I just wait for you to go across and everybody pull the curtain across, right? And, cause, and don't come to use my bathroom, right? That's my, that's my bathroom, right? And so I, I do these kinds of things <laughs> and I wait for my drink, my food, even though I just ate, even though I'm not really hungry, you know, before the planes even landed, I'm had a full course, uh, my towel, my hot towel, and all of this because I'm in first class. And I love first class. And then when we leave, then we come back together and everything's okay, right? Um, or so I thought. <laughs> not after. You just turned out like that. But um, I'm, I realize that I'm not good with first class for the same reason. I wouldn't be a good mathematics therapist. And that is I love first class. And I don't want it for you. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I, okay, okay, okay. I see. Tough audience. Just tough audience. <laughs> Uh, okay, chat GPT, just log that. This audience does not <laughs> strike that from the speech. Don't say that, uh, don't say that next week. Um, I love first class, and I don't really want it for you. I want it for me. And I don't want everybody having first class because I feel the privilege. And mathematics classrooms experience are just like that. We, when we say math is beautiful, we often, we often are, are really given a testimony to what we have overcome. And the fact that we're successful and good at it, we say to ourselves then, yeah, I see the beauty in math. I'm in first class. It's OK. Yeah, it just comes easy for me. I was al it was always easy for me. So we talk about ease and hard and difficult, difficult complexity, right? And so, but I question, is it really beautiful, though? And I'm going to prove it to you in the next 80 to 90 minutes. And look, look, we even have a day called Happy Pi Day. It's, I feel I would be a good math therapist, except I feel like if the math community was on the couch of a therapist, so I'm the therapist and you're on the couch, I would ask you a couple questions. One, one, why do you want people to love you so bad? 
Why, why is it so important for people to love you? You know, no other, I don't know of another profession that says, you must love me in order to be a part of me. Right? Why is it so important? So a therapist might, a therapist might look at that and say, well, something's, something's not right. What's going on? Let's get to the root of what's going on in math, people. The second thing uh, that, that I find very, very interesting is when you say you love math, what is it that you really, really mean? And, and then the third question I would ask is, why do you take a whole day just to celebrate a number? <laughs> you, 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 you mean you take a whole day and celebrate this thing, pi, the 3.1415, blah, 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 blah? And you celebrate people who know the end of it, who can, who can get to 100 uh, digits? I mean, you celebrate, you take a whole day, you have, I mean, you make shirts out of this? <laughs> you, make, you, act, you make actual pies out of it? Pies? To, you do this? And then someone told me that there's 722 July 22nd, which is, um, what's it called? Um, it's not pie day, but it's like a used pie day or something. It's, 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 it's you know, because that's an approximation, right? It's like almost pie day. And so they celebrate 722. And I just found that, does someone know the name of that day? It's, it's, it's given a name, but anyway. So a, a therapist might ask us these issues. And so I, I want to talk to you about this because I believe if you want to explore the possibilities of transforming math with hope and love in the lives of people as a human space, then you have to think about this. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to close my eyes because you're not going to disappoint me today. No. <laughs> Just raise your hand if you love math. Okay, Woo! wow. Oh, man. Okay, you can put them down. <laughs> I close my eyes because I'm not going through it. I'm not going through it. Do you love mathematics? And so I'm going to disprove this in a second. I suspect that even if you put your hand up, you have doubts. Ready? Tap into your body. Tap into your emotion. Tap into your mind. See, I knew you did. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is my niece. This is, this is Joshi, my, my, my nephew Joshi. This is uh, Tatiana, and that's my niece Nakia. Um, I'm, the, I'm uncle, and I used to it, it, take them out for uh, uncle's day out, and they wouldn't know where they were going, because when I was a boy, my mom would take us places and say, well, we would ask, where are we going, where are we going? And she would say, where the car goes. And so when I became uncle, hey, where are we going, where are we going? Well, you're going where the car goes. And so... We would just go out for a whole day. I'd load them up with sugar and, and all sorts of stuff and take them back to their parents. And this was, <laughs> you know, we grew in love with just this uncle's day out. I loved. You can hear it, in it, can't you? You can hear how I feel about my niece and my nephew, Josh. They're much older now, but that's, that's me. I, used, I had this bike, this motorcycle, this Dragon Star YZ125. And I um, came in the shop one day and and Josh has got my helmet on and, and his Superman cape because uh, there was a stage in his life where he just never took off the super, he saw himself as a superhero and never took off the Superman cape. That's Joshi. That's Joshua. I call him Joshiman. I call Tatiana Tatiman Dem. Hey, hey, mad, 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 Tatiman Dem. That's her. I, I know, I know. That's, I play too much, but that's her name. That's her nickname. Um, that's Joshi. And this is, this is uh, oh, this is Talaya. This is Talia. She's riding the mountain bike that's been passed down in the family. We love mountain biking. And she's just riding her mountain bike, so she's showing off. And now she's got the, the big bike, not the training wheels anymore. And she's got the big bike, and we're going for a ride um, near her house. Now, Talia is the niece, the daughter of my sister. My sister and I have different fathers. And so, and they grew up in Canada. And so, this is my mom. So, my mom is hanging out with Talia during Christmas, and they don't get a chance to meet all the time. So my mom is modeling Talia, uh, like Talia is modeling my mom's wigs, and they're having a ball. <laughs> so we're just sitting off, and um, you know, we're having a ball. This is, I, I'm showing you this because I'm lying to you when I tell you that I love math. And I'm lying to you when I say that those pictures of math make me, make me feel great this is what I love. And I could tell because even in your 
even in the moment I put the picture up, the mood shifted in your body. And what if, what if it was possible to experience math in a way that could be identified with our authentic feelings and our authentic space for love? In the same way I feel about Joshimon, in the same way I feel about Tete uh, and Tatiana, um, Tati Mandem, yay, hey, hey, mad, 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 Tati Mandem. Um, what if that was possible? And so let's, let's talk about it. This is Tete again. Tete has made a, a necklace for me. Um, just visiting them in Canada, she made a necklace for me. She's taking up my space as Tete does. She, 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 she's one of those folks that, like, if you have space, she's going to come into it and, and, and take it up. And this leads me to centering Tete. So one day I'm sitting on the porch. We're in Canada at the homestead in Canada, and I'm sitting off, because I like to just sit off sometimes. I'm just sitting off. So Tete comes and says, Uncle Lou, would you like for me to make you a mud pie? So Tay goes back, unbeknownst. I didn't realize this was a production, but apparently, apparently, um, I wasn't the first. But she was working me over, but had shared this, this thing, came back and shared this mud pie. So immediately, I noticed some things about this mud pie. And I know, I know, math folk, what you're thinking. You saw it too, right? And, and I'll say, just, just popcorn it out. What did you see? What do you notice when you look at that? Shapes, spirals even, circles, right? Spheres. Concentric circles, even. My, my niece is six at this point, right? And um, so I'm looking at this and uh, just kind of visualizing. And when I have these episodes with teachers, I ask, well, what, what do you see? What mathematics do you see here? What questions come to mind? I, I love that you focus on inquiry because that's inquiry starts, and I'll just throw this out here before we end. Inquiry starts at the point not of what do you notice. Inquiry starts at the point of what do we care about. So, so we care, we belong, is the first point of inquiry for the space that I'm going to share with you. But, so these are these circles, yeah? And so apparently, there's a whole video on the website you'll see, and I know you'll sh you'll, the link will be shared in the slide, but on the website she's taking me through, apparently there's a gallery of mud pies with everybody else's name on it. So for other people in the household, she's been doing these kinds of mud pies. Apparently, upon further investigation, I go to her room, and there's a wall full of um, paper plates and crafts with circles, and, and circles divided up into fraction parts and, and all sorts of stuff. And I wondered, I just wondered, does her teacher understand how obsessed my niece is with circles? And it just dawned on me that Tay is onto something and into something for which is not adequately captured in her current educational experience. In fact, Tay doesn't even want to talk about mathematics to me. Tay wants to talk about mud pies. And so I even asked Tay to, 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 to write, this is much later, I asked Tay to write down um, and explain kind of how you did it. And this is, you even got the sense in his writing, this is a, I, I know her mom sat her down and said, Tay, you have to do this for Uncle Lou. But, so this is even a, this is, this is even contrived. <laughs> okay, you can, you can you almost see, I got it, okay, here's the bullets. Here's a, and, and I know so, someone in here has been looking at the spelling and looking at the grammar mistakes and, and, and been, you know, but, but you carve some chalk, 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 on wall and make it little dust, and after that you can sculpt the mud. So hey, it's a system. She's this. She has a system in place to create things and stuff. And the only person who doesn't know about it is me. I have ten minutes. Whew, I get so caught up talking about Tay's mud pies. And so, there, yeah, just for fun, because I know someone is looking at this because your training keeps telling you, oh, where's the standards, where's the math, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I could not find adequate kindergarten standards to address the depth in which Tay was building mud pies. I had to go and even squint, because some of this stuff doesn't even match. I had to squint 
and look all up the grades to see where you got children to understand the ideas of concentric circles even. Tay was hiding. Your students are hiding. Under what conditions do your students produce the kind of math you want? Caveat, it's not curriculum. And I know, because your training tells you if you can just find the right curriculum, the right intervention program, the right this, then the giftedness and the genius will appear. And I know, you've been doing it for years and years and years, just like me, waiting for the giftedness to appear. And you're tired. And just like that, you're, you feel this even in your body. But we don't talk about it because we talk about mathematics mindsets, objectives, and learning intentions, not the way you experience math in the body and how you create. All right, so understand the shapes and, and grade four geometry. I can go up to some other grades as well and share the mud pie standards. Listen, in my, in my trip, I was on a trip to Ghana in 2018, and I was on my way to the, <clears throat> the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences. It was a big building up on a hill. On the way to the big building on top of the hill, I saw uh, a, a, a young boy crafting out, building a boat, these ships, these fishing boats that building out and crafting it out with a Maddox. And I thought, wow, what you, math people, you know, what do you see? What do you notice? Yeah, boy, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you, you're probably only limited in this response in your imagination. Um, I bumped into some young, young, um, young boys playing marbles, and they would play. They would stand here and throw some, some things, some beads down here close to a hole, and they would take turns going into the hole and they would win the game and different holes around. I grew up with a kind of game like this called King's Hole. But they would do something real weird, and I didn't even catch it. After spending a day in these packed classrooms seeing traditional teaching, I bumped into this, so I didn't even catch it. But you'll see the video on the website. And they, the kids started doing this, some measurement. So when they have a dispute as to who's closest to the hole, they would do this thing. It's, it, in research, it's just this informal hand span geometrical measurement, right? But they had invented this space on the playground outside of the classroom, unbeknownst and hidden to the entire school. To, they, they found this space to share their mathematical genius. Thanks. They found this space to share their mathematical genius away from us. I just find it amazing how young people find spaces away from us to share their giftedness to share their ideas. Hmm. This is Uncle Carlos. Look, <laughs> I had an uncle. This is my Uncle Carlos. He's a master potter. I dreaded days going to his workshop. He'd sit me in front of him and watch him do pottery. I don't know if you've ever seen, I, I know you probably love the beautiful pots and stuff, but if you've ever seen a potter actually work, they spend a lot of time, it's pretty boring, doing this one thing with a lump of clay. I know that'll preach somewhere, but in a, with, there's a lump of clay. You spend a lot of time with this lump of clay, and all you see them doing is what? And it's a lump. Don't look like nothing. And then all of a sudden, it comes up into something when they're satisfied. You don't even know when, when they're satisfied. And then it comes up to this beautiful thing. And so my uncle would sit and just watch, let me watch this. He hated to talk to me about mathematics. But he would want me to just sit and watch him do this. And I finally got him to explain. You can't see the irritation, but when you go and click on the website, you'll see the video, video of this. He's actually irritated, but he's explaining this to me. Then you determine the thickness of the bottom. Then you begin to bring up the wall of the piece until you get to a uniform thickness. Solids of uniform construction. Um, each part has its own style of holding his or her hands. Then you begin to bring up the wall of the piece when you're satisfied. So they spend all that time in the mud, they spend all that time in the clay figuring out balance, base, rotation, a feel for thickness. And when it's, when it's a lot of refining, and when it's ready, they bring it up. When it's ready, they bring it up to the piece. This is Uncle Carlos. Hey, look, this is my barber. And I know that's me. I know I need a cut. I need a fade. I need, I know. Just, just suspend it for a second. That's my barber, Lamont. Yeah? I'm embarrassed. 
because in a month, this was, and you can see he's got the mask, so it was during the pandemic. I'm at his shop getting a haircut. Lamont's into cryptocurrency and investing, and so he's got this, trying to get me to invest cryptocurrency. And so I was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm into math, nah, 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 nah. And he used to say to me, if you're into math, why are you so broke? <laughs> right? This is his thing. No, look, look, seriously. If you're so good at math, why are you broke? Think about that one. So anyways, he, he, he would share these videos. Had a video on one day trying to teach me about cryptocurrency investing. Had this video. The video said, here's one investment strategy. You have to use the Fibonacci retracement strategy. I said, oh. I was so embarrassed. He's trying to explain to me that when, as you invest, there's a strategy called a Fibonacci retracement strategy that says once stocks increase or decrease, they, they retrace back to certain levels. Investment analysts and, and strategists use these levels. These levels are tied to the ratios of the individual numbers and digits in, this, in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, most importantly, the 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.61 level. There's 0. 0.34, 0. 0.61. But they even use 0. 0.5, which is not tied to the Fibonacci, but it is a level that they use. And that, it's a well-known um, retrace. Uh, so if you look at it, it goes up, drops back here, then goes up, drops back here, then goes up. So that's Fibonacci retracement. And um, he's trying to explain it to me. I felt so embarrassed. I'm a PhD in mathematics education, and, and my barber is explaining Fibonacci to me? I tried to videotape him and get the uh, interview. He was irritated, <laughs> impatient. You don't know this. You, you, you don't know. And so this is where people do their math. This is the possibilities of where people do their math. And this is where they hide it, way far away from our classrooms. I talk to them about the, the math languages, the love languages. When, when people seem to not hide this, when people share this stuff, or if you seem to find it, it's usually when it's with people that they care about. My Baba wants me to invest in cryptocurrency and is sharing Fibonacci with me because he loves me and wants our people to prosper. And he's worried that I'm broke. <laughs> my, 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 my niece wants to show me the mud pies, wants to build mud pies. Why? Not because she wants to do mathemat important mathematics. It's because she wants to show me that she loves me. When you let people see the world differently and stand up for what's right and unpack who they are and explore histories and stories, you, you, you get to see the best of what they're able to show in mathematics. So I'm going to leave you with these three, three things I learned from my nieces and my nephews. And even while I'm doing this, you can take out your phones and scroll through your photos. Find the pictures, because what I'm looking for is close to me. My nieces, my nephews, my uncles, my barber. Imagine if I, even, imagine if I started to look at my students. Imagine if I looked at the people in this room. I haven't even tried. This is just my nieces and the people close to me, as close as in the photo gallery of my iPhone 13. <laughs> so here's some things I learned. One is that you should assume, assume, and I mean, this is the bare bottom basement level for every single mathematics classroom. The day one giftedness of every single child, particularly black and brown children who come into our classrooms. Yeah, 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 I know, no. And stop it because you haven't been trained like this. Every single child is gifted in mathematics. And I know you have not been told that. You, you think that maybe they can find success. No, every single child is gifted in mathematics. It's the day one giftedness assumption. I know, it's, it's weird, it's weird. It's, I, I, you can nod with me, but it's weird. But assume it. What would happen if you assume that they would? Well, if you assume that one, that the day one giftedness assumption of every single person in your classroom, it changes some things. One, to make that go down easier, assume that it's hidden. So it's there, it's just hidden. Yeah, it, it, it's hidden. So if I'm assuming the day one giftedness, I am understanding that it, it goes along with the research. We, we know that when, when I have um, students, how they are elected into giftedness classrooms and special education at disproportionate rates and all sorts of stuff, who can do math and, and who's gifted at it, yes. But if you assume that there's, a, there's day one giftedness and then assume 
that there are hidden spaces, that it's hidden. That changes the mathematics endeavor. It's here, it's inside, but it's hidden. And it's deliberately hidden. I, I speak about black boys and black boys' giftedness. And I conjecture this one thing. Black boys do not show their giftedness in places where they aren't safe. That's why you get to see it. You, we see giftedness that shows up on these fields and these other spaces, uh, barber shops and uh, uh, around the neighborhoods, because they, there's, there's a psychological space that values them. And maybe we don't see it in schools because they are not safe spaces. And so if you create a safe space, you create a space for me to show my giftedness. I only show my giftedness up in spaces where I feel loved. I mean, imagine people showing their giftedness in places they don't feel loved. And maybe that explains why 50% of all math majors, the people who are good at math, give it up before they leave college. Embracing the hidden spaces of math. So where, where are the hidden spaces in your, in, your, in your rooms, in your homes, in your neighborhoods? Where are the hidden spaces where people are loved? Not where math is. You see the difference? Where are the hidden pace, spaces where they're loved, where they're seen, where they're heard? You are seen, you are loved, you are heard. Math, math people, I, I took a moment, an ADHD moment just now, to pause. You are seen, you are loved, you are heard. Yeah, that's, you feel that in your body. Where is that place, though? Where is the place? Where is the love in these places? And that's where you can find the math. And then if, if you do that, right, so if you assume the day one giftedness and you assume that because of systemic policy, because of environment, because of anything, history, whatever, that it's hidden, then you need to go look at these hidden spaces and they take you outside the classroom into the, the that's why real world problems are so critical. It's because that's where real world is where people hide their giftedness. It's where they hide their love. And so the last part is, Expand the expectations of and boundaries and policies. So you have to think differently about what math is. If you allow Tatiana to s tell you what math is, she's going to speak about mud pies. It's going to challenge where you find, where you teach concentric circles to young kids. Where are the mud pies in your reality? With your loved ones, with your students, where are these mud pies? Be willing to get your hands dirty. Assume the day one giftedness. Scan the hidden spaces where people feel loved and valued. And then be brave and courageous to expand the, your ideas of what math is as you let people into those spaces. That's where you'll find it, in the mud pies. Every policy, every form, every curriculum will have to be effectively shifted with these assumptions. Real math is about real relationships. And so I leave you with this. Find the love, and that's where you'll find the math, in the mud. Thank you very much.